team, John Garber here, your friendly Python community coordinator at Research Platform Services. I hope you're enjoying learning how to code, and bet you're starting to realize that it's really nothing much more complicated than a list of instructions, much like a recipe. Where your data are your ingredients, and Python is a kitchen full of cooking tools that you can use to, one, prepare and pre-process your data, just like you prepare your ingredients, two, combine and analyze your data, just like you turning your ingredients into a delicious soup, and three, plating it up or visualizing it for all your dinner guests and colleagues to enjoy. But what if you needed to repeat part of your recipe hundreds of times? You could copy and paste it, but what a waste of time. Luckily, every programming language would agree with you, and that's why we have programming loops. Kind of like a boomerang insta-post of programming, loops will make your computer repeat a list of instructions as many times as you want. There are several kinds of loops to choose from, but in this video, we will use the for loop to help us prepare some ingredients in our Python kitchen. So what does a for loop do? It repeats a set of instructions for as many times as you want in your program. What makes it really useful is that you can change the ingredients or data being used during each repetition. Here's what a for loop looks like in real code. It's essentially made of three parts. One, the part where you define the collection or sequence of ingredients you want to use in your loop. Two, the for loop statement where you tell the computer what to cycle through and make up a variable name that will represent each ingredient in the collection during the loop. And three, the code block or set of instructions that will be repeated for each ingredient one at a time. Now I could show you some programming examples, but that wouldn't make riveting YouTube content, would it? So instead we'll hack an everyday kitchen task with a for loop. Hello Chef Annie, what do you have cooking up for us today? Well I'm making a vegetable soup, but first I need to prepare the onions, carrots and celery. Mmm, sounds like a boring, repetitive, yet important task with a delicious product. Let's turn it into a loop. As you can see here, we have turned our for loop vegetable soup recipe into code by one, creating a list of veggies we have to prep, two, writing a for loop statement for that list where we make a variable name representing the veggie we are slicing up in each repetition of the loop, and three, a code block of food prep instructions that Chef Annie will perform for each veggie, including an if statement to dictate whether or not to peel the vegetable. Let's watch this loop happen in real time. Annie has started the food prep task and has picked up the onion, our first item in our collection of veggies. She is now running through the task in the code block. And as you can see on the left, the relevant instructions in our code are highlighted in yellow. With this onion, she's peeling the skin off and chopping it up before she adds it into the soup. Having completed the first task, she goes to our second item in our list, the carrot. She's not peeling it this time, but she's chopping it up and putting it into our soup. Finally, we get to the last run of our loop with our third item in our list, the celery. Once again, not removing the skins, but just chopping it and throwing it into the soup. Becoming the top loop chef. Mmm, <laughs> that's some delicious four loop vegetable soup. I hope you realize now that for loops are great not only for repeating tasks, but for repeating the same task on multiple items in your scripts. Just like we repeated our food prep tasks on each vegetable going into our soup. Now you may be wondering why I use the most boring part of cooking to show how a for loop works. It's because that's what for loops are really good for, automating the boring stuff, like uploading multiple files into Python and extracting the relevant information, or looping through each piece of data and filtering out the non-numerical inputs. But it doesn't have to be just the boring stuff, really just anything that needs to be repeated a set number of times, like time steps in a simulation or the creation of multiple graphs. So when you're coding, keep this mantra in mind. If you have to copy and paste more than twice, then a loop should suffice. That way you won't waste the copy and paste and work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm.